day ladies and gentlemen i'm here to bring you a very important update on ethereum so in this video we're going to run through some technical analysis talk about what i see happening both short term and long term talk about some major macro news events some giant catalysts that you need to be aware of and discuss this wedge and breakout that we're very likely to soon have with ethereum so folks if you like the sound of that I want to ask you to do me a favor and do yourself a favor like subscribe comment share and hit that bell icon notified of new uploads i appreciate it helps out with the youtube algorithm and youtube will know that you know people want to see uh ethereum videos so folks lots of interesting stuff to talk about with ethereum bottom line is we are in a wedge here we are likely to see a breakout uh, in the near future, I'd say within the next four to five days, we're likely to see a breakout out of this wedge, probably sooner than that, to be honest with you. So let's begin by defining some of these major uh, uh, support and resistance, resistance lines we see here. So based off these two wicks, I believe we can draw a resistance line. So this is the top of our wedge here. And if we zoom back out to back in January, based off the bottom of these two wicks here, if we just extend a support line, we can see that to this day, those levels are actually quite relevant. We can see here, and here and here they've been acting as support so even those levels from back in the day are still relevant to today's uh, price action as well if we draw a support line from these wicks here these are all uh, th this I, I believe as well will be a price reactive zone for ethereum so whatever way we break out of this wedge we're likely to trend in that direction for quite some time now what way will we break out well one key level to be uh, on the lookout for is the 200 ema on the four hour okay we're right above the 200 ema on the four hour i believe this is the key inflection point to understand what way we're going to trend whether we're going to re we're going to retest support and break and possibly break down or if we're going to retest resistance and possibly break up so given that this is a, a quite significant ema right uh, close by to price action whatever way we break above or below this thing will be very telling for what way ethereum goes is uh you know the, the 200 ema on the four hour currently being uh just under 1580 so from 1575 to 1580 is where it's at right now now major resistance i believe is the 100 ema on the six hour that kind of being from 610 to about 1600 that's gonna be major resistance if we can get above that i think we're tackling this resistance line here and if we can get above that we're likely to see bullish continuation in my opinion if we zoom back out we can see here that we pumped up found support at around the 100 uh, ema on the six hour pumped up found support on the 100 ema on the six hour so it's been a very relevant very uh, strong support historically but ever since we broke down from it i i now would wager that's going to act as a uh, significant resistance so that's gonna be an, a very important level to get back above if you want to see bullish continuation now if we break down i think critical support in the short term here is going to be the 200 ema in the six hour that being from about 1500 to i'd say 1490 that area is going to be strong support if we break down from this wedge here so uh let's take a look at our indicators here try to try and get a sense of what is going on here in the short term let's begin by looking at the daily so the daily for ethereum is starting to look strong the histogram is taking up weighted macd bullish crossover on the way up stochastic rsi on the way up although concerningly it's curving down so i wonder if we'd have a bearish crossover interesting and the rsi is you know making higher highs here so you know some strength on the daily although it's not in, it's not super convincing uh looking at the 12 here okay yeah bullish crossover in the 12 hour macd very good to see let's see when the last time was we had a bullish crossover on the 12 hour macd in the oversold region we're gonna have to zoom out quite a bit here to see when so were we oversold let's see where we were last oversold hmm so uh, that's not very i'd say here so <laughs> this was the last time we had a 12 hour bullish crossover on the macd in the oversold region so very interesting to see uh, weighted MACD on the way up, although again starting to curve down, might have a bearish crossover. Ooh, look at that! Yeah, weighted MACD on the 12 hour seems to want to have a bearish crossover. Very bad news, bears. Very no bueno. Let's take a look at the stochastic. Stochastic RSI overbought, having a bearish crossover. Very interesting. Does not seem to want to go up. So we do have that 12 hour bullish crossover on the MACD, which is good to see. But we're not really getting a strong confluence of reasons. The weighted MACD in the stochastic. Uh, look bearish to me uh, regular RSI making higher highs higher lows good to see but all not a not a strong confluence of reasons so let's look, take a look at the six um six hour histogram showing some weakness although weighted back to seems to want to have a bullish crossover so again not a strong confluence of reasons 
and the stochastic RSI going for a bit of leg down. Regular RSI not doing a whole lot, kind of in a bit of a micro uptrend. So interesting. And let's take a look at the four. Yeah, four hour. Pff, folks, we're not seeing a confluence of reasons here at all. Because, like, look, the, the MACD bearish. Way to MACD bearish. Stochastic RSI bullish. Uh, regular RSI bullish. So, not at all a confluence of reasons. And let's take a look at the one hour. So, for those who don't know, whenever you're doing TA, uh, the more indicators you have pointing in the same direction, the more confidence you can be uh, of direction. So, when you have different indicators pointing in different directions, uh, that's what I mean by, by not having strong confidence of reasons. You don't, you don't, you're not really confident in direction because you have different things pointing in different directions. So, let's take a look at the one hour. Uh, one hour MACD bullish crossover on the way up, stochastic on the way up, uh, weighted MACD on the way up, regular RSI on the way down. Uh, well, I, I think I see something interesting here with the RSI, which is uh, we're getting bullish divergence here on the RSI. If we could draw something, yeah, I think that's somewhat valid here. Something of a resistance line on the RSI. If we can continue to make a higher high, hopefully we'll continue to make a higher high in price action. So that's something interesting to see. So we're starting uh, just to kind of summarize here. We're starting to see some concerning things on the daily for Ethereum and larger time frames. Lower time frames are not a strong confluence of reasons. Ultimately, when we're not getting a strong confluence of reasons like that, the most important thing to look out for is the price action. And given that we're in a wedge here, uh, nearing an apex, we're just going to move in a tighter and tighter range until we break out. And whatever way we break out of this thing, we're likely to trend in that direction for quite some time. I think the original breakout point from this macro ascending triangle that we were in, that's that kind of being around uh, 1475, will act as strong support in my opinion. Again, we have the 200 EMA on the 6-hour right about there. So this whole range right here from, I'd say, you know, 14, 1500 to 1475 is going to be strong support i think that's a temporary stop if we break down from this wedge and aside from that you know we have some support levels below us from 1440 to 1420 we get a a, a little bit of, of volume starting to build up in those regions and if we move over to the uh, 10 hour we have the 10 hour 200 dma which acted as support here right at 1400 dollars. i think 1400 dollars is definitely going to be some kind of floor for ethereum if we break down as well look at that the the eight hour to um uh 200 dma right there at 1400 dollars lots of strong support right at $1,400, lots of strong support all throughout these regions. So it's going to, folks, if we break down, I think it's likely than not that we'd make a higher high. Of course, that's not a guarantee, but I mean, lots of strong support below us. And again, where we fell and found support below kind of, I'd say the 1350 range to about the 1320, we can see there's a nice spike in volume here. And if we finish off by looking at the 12 hour, we see that the 200 EMA on the 12 hour is right at around, I'd say Ethereum's, you know, kind of last stand area, which is 1220 to about 1270. Lots of volume here. If we, uh, if we, yeah, this is the VPVR point of control. This is where the most volume for Ethereum was moved. So I think this is kind of the lowest Ethereum could go and still remain, you know, somewhat short term bullish. If we fell below these regions, I would be worried that we uh, reach some kind of local top with Ethereum. But folks, to mention some key news events that you need to be aware of. So optimistic rollups, which aim to make Ethereum more scalable, increase the transactions per second, and improve some of the gas inefficiencies with Ethereum is set to launch their mainnet this month sometime in March. So folks, that is a major event for Ethereum, a giant upgrade. If we can get any kind of, uh, of improvements to Ethereum gas fees in the near future here, next month or so, that's bound to be an insanely bullish catalyst for Ethereum and probably likely to drive some kind of price action, in my opinion. So that's happening in March. Then in April, on April 15th, we have the Berlin hard fork, which will further aim to improve some gas inefficiencies, uh, make improvements to Ethereum virtual, uh, virtual machine and some safety elements of Ethereum. So lots of stuff going on. And another uh, major development that's uh, that's being proposed, I believe, is, is it summer 21? Um, don't quote me on that. I believe it's summer 2021, which is EIP 1559. That stands for, whenever uh, you hear EIP, it stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal. It's how developers uh, propose improvements <laughs> to Ethereum. And then the community votes on it. So uh, what Ethereum EIP 1559 is, it's a, it's a proposal that will aim to make Ethereum deflationary by taking a part of each transaction and burning it. So by the end of 2021, Ethereum might become deflationary. 
very very interesting and if and if eip 50 1559 goes through it might even become harder money and more deflationary than bitcoin folks this is why i'm so bullish on ethereum because look i like bitcoin you know it brought the value in, in the hype behind the space it's a it's a nice store of value i like the idea it's it's hard money i'm, I'm not i'm not a bitcoin hater i own a, t a tiny bit of bitcoin but i am an ethereum fanboy to be honest because ethereum actually does something and one day soon it may become deflationary one day soon it may become scalable uh, so you know if ethereum 2.0 is successful that's an if it's not a guarantee if it's successful in a lot of its aims to make ethereum scalable and interoperable uh and hopefully maybe one day deflationary oof i think ethereum is is, is gonna take over folks do not sleep on Ethereum. I think these are just very early days in Ethereum's price structure. The only thing I will be doing moving forward, if Ethereum uh, corrects, is adding to my long-term bags. That is in. That is it. We're in the beginning stages of a bull run, in my opinion. That is not likely to end until you know uh, around October, November this year. So let's take a look at the Ethereum Bitcoin pair, because this is a very good pair to try and understand what Ethereum's next big move is. So we've been reacting extremely well off the range I've drawn. On here from uh from days ago so ethereum uh, on the ethereum bitcoin period, we're stuck between this very uh narrow range range <laughs> um and we can't just move sideways in this tight range forever eventually we're gonna have to break out and pick a direction and whatever way we break out of this very tight range we're likely to trend in that direction for quite some time but it's also very likely to have a quite substantial effect on the us dollar value of ethereum uh in my opinion i find that the uh, ethereum bitcoin pair and whatever um crypto you're looking at the pairing with bitcoin often acts or can act as a leading indicator on the uh, ethereum uh or on the us dollar value of whatever cryptocurrency you're looking at because whenever we see a big move uh you know a breakout from major support and resistance that that sometimes um the us dollar value of that coin sometimes lags behind so uh what if we break out bullishly you know that from this thing here uh you know it may be the that the, the uh, us dollar value uh maybe lags behind a you know a couple hours a day or so who knows right so I, i've seen it happen before so this is gonna be a, a very important chart uh, to look out for to try and understand what the next uh, major move is with the uh, US dollar value of Ethereum, whatever way we break out of this range. I think, again, we're looking to trend in that direction for quite some time. And another reason why I'm so bullish on Ethereum, which is if we zoom out and we look at the previous cycle and we see that Ethereum reached over 12% of Bitcoin's price at the peak. So if if uh, you know if Ethereum uh, has a good chance of doing something similar uh, this time around, uh, let's say it reaches uh, 10 percent, 8 percent of Bitcoin's price at the peak. Well, if Bitcoin has a good chance of uh, reaching the hundreds of thousand dollars, you know, one, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars this cycle. Well, then I think Ethereum over the long term has a good chance of reaching the tens of thousands of dollars uh, this time around. Now, someone in the comments brought up a very interesting, very good point, which is Ethereum reached its peak. Um, roughly a month after Bitcoin. So that 12% was not 12% of Bitcoin's price at the peak. That 12% was uh, was 12% of, of what Bitcoin did after it fell a bit. So granted, point taken, very interesting point. So let's say, you know, Bitcoin reaches a peak of uh, 300,000, then drops to 250, and then Ethereum reaches its... Uh, 10% uh, of that. Well, th th then I think Ethereum still has a very good chance of reaching the uh, the tens of thousands of dollars. Whether we're talking 30,000 Ethereum, 20,000 Ethereum, or, or 10,000 Ethereum by the peak of this bull run, I still believe that Ethereum is a great long-term model and still has great long-term potential. And in my opinion, is very likely to reach well over $10,000 this cycle so those are some of my thoughts with ethereum now another very good chart to look at trying to understand what the altcoins such as ethereum are going to do is the bitcoin dominance chart for those who don't know bitcoin dominance is the total value of bitcoin in comparison to the uh, total value of all cryptocurrency whenever it rises all coins typically suffer whenever it falls all coins typically benefit and so we've been kind of falling not too too much not too quickly but we have been falling the last few days here so if we continue to see bitcoin dominance fall and trend down that should tell you that the altcoins have some gas in their tank to keep pumping now if we start to quickly rally and quickly rise in bitcoin dominance that is going to place the dampers on the altcoins such as ethereum pumping so if you ever want to know you know how much gas the altcoins have in the tank to, to continue to pumping always look at the bitcoin dominance chart it's a very good gauge of, of the state of the altcoin market so uh yeah folks these are some of the most important things uh to understand with ethereum now to finish off um with the long kind of some of the long-term picture stuff um i you know 
Well, I do think Ethereum has a good chance of reaching the tens of thousands of dollars by the end of this bull run. I, I don't know that for sure. Nobody knows for sure. I think it's a much better approach to look to scale out and sell out of long-term bags, uh, more so based off time frames and less so based off price targets. I, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos are not financial advice, but I'm just explaining the approach I'm taking. I'm going to be looking to scale out late third quarter, early fourth quarter, and you know, more heavily come September, October, November uh, is really when I'll, I'll, I'll be scaling out. So whether whether Ethereum's at 5,000, 10,000, or 50,000 by then, whatever the market just so happens to give me around that time is when I'll be looking to sell out. Because look, I do think we're in a bull market that's likely to reach some kind of end. And I do think that end is likely to happen uh, with Bitcoin late September and Ethereum and the altcoins are likely to reach their peak uh, roughly a month after Bitcoin. So uh, folks, if you want to know uh, why I think that the cycle will end then and there, uh, make sure you join our Discord link for that down in the description. We have a chart posted in our in all our different resources section. Uh, the chart I'm referring to is by Trading Show, who does a very good job of breaking down the Bitcoin cycles based off the halvings so if you want to know why I, I i believe the market will reach a peak then and there again join our discord we have semi-regular coin calls with our members where we discuss the market answer questions and as well if you like what uh what we do want to support us consider joining our patreon link down in the description you get access to our uh vip discord group where we talk about low cap gems interesting setups and we have lots of very interesting resources there as well we talk to all our discord members uh regularly so consider joining our patreon and becoming a discord Discord member. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care.